My dear brethren, it has often been asked, why does God, in his infinite wisdom and compassion, allow us to endure pain? Why must we, his beloved children, traverse through valleys of suffering and moments of great despair? Surely, if he is all-powerful, he could spare us from these burdens? All. Oh. But therein lies the crux of our misunderstanding. I invite you to journey with me as we contemplate the nature of divine love and how God's painful plan, though often incomprehensible, is meant to break us, but only so that we may be remade into something far greater than before. Consider this. If a surgeon, upon seeing that a patient suffers from a deadly ailment, refuses to cut, would he be acting out of kindness? Surely not. For though the incision brings pain, it is a necessary step toward healing. So it is with God. In his infinite goodness, he permits suffering, not out of cruelty, but out of love. To save us from our own self-destructive tendencies, he must at times make our nature less pleasant to us, so that we may no longer be content to live without him. As I wrote in The Problem of Pain, we can ignore even pleasure. But pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. You see, my dear friends, suffering is often the instrument by which we are awakened from the spiritual slumber into which we so easily fall. In comfort and ease, we may forget the deeper call of the divine becoming content with the fleeting pleasures of this world. But pain, ah, pain, forces us to look beyond ourselves, to seek refuge and solace in the one who alone can provide it. There is a temptation in moments of suffering to believe that God has forsaken us. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, it is often in these very moments of trial that we come to understand the depth of his presence. When all earthly joys seem to vanish, when the pleasures of the world lose their allure, we are left with a yearning that can only be satisfied by the eternal. This, I believe, is the true nature of joy, not the fleeting happiness that comes from satisfying our earthly desires, but the deep, abiding joy that springs from communion with God. In mere Christianity, I noted, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. My dear brethren, this world is not our home. It offers hints and shadows of joy, but not the substance. That substance can only be found in God, who is the source of all true happiness. It is a paradox is it not? We seek pleasure, but in seeking it for its own sake, we find emptiness. We flee from suffering, but in embracing it with faith, we find joy. God, in his infinite wisdom, has designed it this way. He allows our paths to be confounded, our pleasures to be thwarted, so that we may come to desire him above all else. If we are honest with ourselves, we will admit that we are far from perfect. There are dark corners in our hearts, places we dare not let the light of God's truth shine. It is in these hidden places that our pride festers, where our selfishness grows unchecked. But God, in his mercy, does not leave us in this state. He desires to transform us, to make us into beings fit for his kingdom. Yet transformation, my dear friends, is never easy. It requires a breaking, a reshaping, a remolding. In the screw tape letters, I wrote, he wants them to learn to walk and must therefore take away his hand on, and if only the will to walk is really there, he is pleased even with their stumbles. God allows us to stumble, to fall, and even to suffer, because it is through these experiences that our faith is tested and strengthened. Like gold refined in the fire, we are purifying by our trials. We may not understand it at the time, but each moment of suffering is part of a divine process 
by which we are being made into something new, something beautiful. Indeed, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 5 verses 3 to 5, we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, a perseverance, character, and character, hope. It is not the suffering itself that brings us closer to God, but what the suffering produces in us. Through it, we learn patience, humility, and dependence on Him. We are made more like Christ, who endured the greatest suffering of all for our sake. There is a point in every believer's life when they must come to terms with the fact that they are not in control. The world tells us to rely on our own strength, to forge our own path, to be the masters of our faith. But God's way is different. He calls us to surrender, to lay down our will, our desires, our very lives at His feet. This is perhaps the hardest lesson to learn, for it goes against everything our fallen nature desires. Yet it is in surrender that we find true freedom. As I wrote in Mere Christianity, the more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves we become because He made us. He invented all the different people that you and I were intended to be. It is when I turn to Christ, when I give myself up to His personality, that I first begin to have a real personality of my own. God does not desire to break us simply for the sake of breaking. No, He breaks us so that He may rebuild us into something far greater than we could ever imagine. The seed must fall into the ground and die before it can bear fruit. So it is with us. Our surrender, our dying to self, is the beginning of a new and abundant life in Christ. In our darkest moments, when all hope seems lost, it is often then that God reveals His power most profoundly. You see, my friends, miracles are not just things that happened long ago in the pages of Scripture. They are the evidence of God's ongoing presence and His unchanging love for His people. As I said in Miracles, the central miracle asserted by Christians is the Incarnation. They say that God became man. Every other miracle prepares for this, or exhibits this, or results from this. And so, when the storms of life rage around us, when the winds of adversity threaten to overwhelm us, we must remember that we are not alone. God is with us, performing miracles in ways we may not always recognize. Sometimes, the miracle is not the removal of the storm, but the strength to endure. Sometimes, it is not the healing of the body, but the healing of the soul. I must, at this point, remind you of the great promise that is given to all who trust in the Lord. No matter how great the suffering, no matter how deep the pain, we are never beyond the reach of God's love. In Romans 8 verses 38 to 39, we are assured that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a glorious promise. Even in the face of death itself, we are victorious. For the Christian, there is no fear, for we know that beyond this life lies a greater reality, a true home, where every tear will be wiped away and every sorrow will be turned to joy. I urge you, therefore, to hold fast to your faith. Do not be shaken by the trials of this world, for they are but temporary. Keep your eyes fixed on the Eternal, on the One who holds all things in His hands. He has a plan for your life, a plan that may include pain, but also includes unimaginable joy and fulfillment. Finally, my dear brethren, let us not forget that we are on a journey. This world, with all its suffering and pain, is not our final destination. We were made for another world, a world where there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. And while we walk through this valley of shadows, we must keep alive the desire for that true country. As I wrote in The Problem of Pain, we may ignore, 
but we can nowhere evade the presence of God. The world is crowded with Him. He walks everywhere incognito. Let us learn to see Him in the midst of our trials, to hear His voice calling us forward, and to trust that His ways, though mysterious, are always good. My friends, we are on a great journey. The road is hard, and at times we may stumble, but we do not walk it alone. God is with us, guiding us, shaping us, and preparing us for a glorious future beyond our wildest dreams. Let us then embrace His painful plan, not with fear or resentment, but with faith, hope, and joy, knowing that it leads us ever closer to Him. Amen.